global happenings today. We communicate. We analyze global news. Stay tuned. Hello, great people. Welcome back to Global Happenings today. We're so excited to have you again. The political battle between Labour Party and other political parties have gone far beyond, you know, just you know the political parties. Uh, Labour Party have so many people to contend with, the internal structure and also the other political parties with other senior personalities call it some political ideologies to have come up to give them a tough fight this time around Wolesh Soinka is calling out dirty and demanding for one-on-one -on -one challenge with him never heard um, Wolesh Soinka speak in that manner that he wants to have one-on-one -on -one challenge with the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed mm. I don't know why all of this is happening now, and I don't know who is uh, bankrolling all of this competition I'm seeing because it's really out of place. Uh, we are looking for good governance, but unfortunately, those who claim to be supporting it are coming up with all manner of things, fighting just one party who they claim came far third. But then let's just look at what Wallace Inca the Nobel Prize winner have to tell Nigerians. Now, according to the news, Walesho Inka, Professor Walesho Inka, Nobel Prize winner, has challenged the vice presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed, to a one-on-one -on -one interview regarding the nation's democracy at this time in its history. Speaking on Wednesday, March 22nd, Dati Baba Ahmed called on President Muhammadu Buhari and Chief Justice of Nigeria not to sway in Bola Ahmed Tinibu, whom Ainek declared as the president-elect, insisting that declaring Tinibu a winner and issuing him a certificate of return was against the constitution. Baba Ahmed, who was a guest on Channel Television Politics Today, went on to stress that whoever swear in Mr. Tinibu has ended democracy in Nigeria, a position that did not sit well with Professor so Wallace Soinka. Reacting to the interview that elicited great criticism from political stakeholders as well as a 5 million naira fine for the TV station, Noble Laureate described the remarks as a kind of do-or-die attitude and provocation that goes contrary to democratic dispositions. So Inka said the LP vice presidential candidate tried to detect to the supreme arbiters of the nation, adding that it was unacceptable. According to him, he said, I have never heard anyone threaten the judiciary on television the way that he did. I heard the kind of menacing blackmailing language as that to which we were treated by Dati. That kind of do or die attitude and provocation is not what I think we have all been struggling for. Nearly the totality of that is coming in the interview was unbecoming. It was like trying to detect to the supreme arbiters of the nation and whatever you think of the Supreme Court. It is an institution we all refer to sooner or later. But that he keeps saying in his wisdom that the Supreme Court must agree with me. That is what is known as fascistic language and it is not acceptable. The referred poet position on Darty's utterances, however, did not go down well with many supporters of the LP presidential candidate and his vice, even as they dragged Soinka on social media. Giving a reply to the criticism and the conduct of Dati Baba Ahmed Soinka in a statement titled Fascism on Course, noted that Nigerian Democracy 2023 has witnessed innovation largely in the retrogressive vein as violent ethnic profiling and intimidation continue to be easily overlooked even as they are directed against descending voices. So Inka condemned the sanction against Channel TV and praised the professionalism of the anchor whom he stressed made several attempts to keep Baba Ahmed in check while on air. 
He went on to challenge the LP vice presidential candidate to a debate as regards his claim of Nigeria's democracy ending if Tinubu is sworn in come May 29. According to him, he said, May I seize the opportunity, by the way, to condemn the sanction imposed on Channel Television, which anchor the performance of the LP candidate. As stated, I watched the program keenly, saw the valiant effort of the interviewer to ensure fair hearing. I failed to understand just where the station would be faulted, except from a disposition for injustice. To sustain that penalty is to give joy to others who turn internet into a soccer way for their racial or rancid emission, yet feel that others should be silenced. If channel feels up to it, I offer myself willing to engage Mr. Darty or any nominee of his on its platform on this very bone of contention, one-on-one -on -one without malodorous intervention of media trolls and with the same interviewer as mediator, that should be taken as a serious offer. The Nobel laureate stress on oh, more this thing has gone far beyond what I expected. And uh, I must say that it's going to generate a lot of issues because with what we are saying, it, it's gone far, it, it's gone past the poor um, election. Uh, let me say it has gone past the poor organization of election in Nigeria. Now it's like everybody is feeling that um, Labour Party should concede to the alleged defeat which they are currently questioning in the law court. I mean, what we saw there, yeah, a lot of people may say it's totally wrong for that army to say what he said. But I, I think it was born out of the fact that despite the fact that Nigerians and the entirety of the world saw the failures of the just concluded presidential election, people still believe that it's a normal thing. We can continue with it. Now, if you look at what Walesho Inka said, I'm not seeing him outrightly challenging the outcome of the presidential election, which to some extent he feels it's very, very okay that Nigerians should accept it. And then a personality like Tinibu, who up till today, we are yet to know his true age via a document presented. We are yet to know his classmates. We are yet to know a lot of things about him. He's yet to give us full details about the drug case that he uh, that came up in you know united states of america and so many other things nobody feels that is wrong they just feel man it's okay this guy should get into power these lp guys labor party members who are busy disturbing the internet demanding for a redress in the law court they should sit down and keep quiet everything should go well or more what kind of country is this now this is one of the things that we've been talking about when you allow evil to strive for too long after a while even the people you feel are righteous will be comfortable with it. And that is what we are seeing today. I, I think we, we, we have to get to a point whereby the youth um, send out a message that the old guns, we are true with them. They should rest. Because whatever becomes of this country in the nearest future, for many of them, they have few years to live on earth. Let's be real. They have few years to live on earth. And guess what? No matter what this country turns out to be, the impact will not really be on them. And guess what? If they check out from this world today, nobody will, they won't even feel the pains because they have already spent their youthful days. And guess what they were doing in their youthful days? They were the same people who were protesting, walking miles, protesting. We saw a lot of unbelievable things that they did. But they just feel that um, we, we should just align with their age and with their demands and we should be comfortable with it. Just sit back and watch how the country is eroding day after day. How can you wake up and be making this kind of thing, challenging uh, that when you see that his expression was towards a mandate that was stolen in our very eyes? All the gra gra that uh, that he said, and everybody said it was fascism, or this and that and that and that is a dictatorial way of uh, leadership and that and that and that. 
all of it was toward the fact that Nigerians were deceived, number one, by INIC. They deceived us. They came out clear and told us it will be real time, online real time, all the, um, this thing will be given to us, what do they call it, all the um, results will be given to Nigeria on time, real time. We watch how those things were totally messed up. BVAs are here, cannot even give us what we want. I feel personally, I don't intend to intrude into whatever they have in mind or whatever their feelings are, but I feel that what this guy should be more interested in is for judiciary to be given the right to do what they're supposed to do. And right now, if we are very um, free thinkers, if truly we, we claim we are free thinkers, everything should be centering on that 25% and also on the issue of drug cases. On, on, on some of the things that will quicken the quicken judiciary in passing their judgment. Not all of this. Was it uh, that Yame made that carry out that fraud we call election? Was it him that carried it out? Were we not promised the right thing? Did the right was the right thing done? Did we not watch with our very eyes as people were being threatened in a state that they have lived in and they have contributed tremendously to the growth of that place? Nobody's talking about that. But here is someone coming out to challenge uh, Dati on blah, blah, blah. For me, this is really out of place. I didn't expect this. Guess what? I am overly disappointed in all of this. That's just what I have to say. I don't know your position on this, but I don't think that um, that Yamit should honor all of that. Let's leave everything to, I believe that in the nearest future, some people will have to come.